Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and I'm going to do a set of videos here that shows you how to process some static GNSS or GPS data in Trimble Business Center, process the baselines and do an adjustment. And that's what I like to do at the start of most of my jobs is a little static network, get get a good control basis down, usually on state plane coordinates tied out to, uh, to NGS cores. So I'm going to show you how to do that today, and this is very real life. We're, we're doing this on a real project. I haven't worked through this data yet, so this is unscripted. So we'll probably have some, uh, you know, hiccups, and you might hear uh, belching or barking. or uh, So this is real life. So we're just going to power through this. And uh, I'm doing this video for my buddy Eric, just kind of as a refresher for him. Eric is a surveyor extraordinaire of the East Bay here in Central California. So you know who you are, Eric. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got a little project we did in the uh, in the Bay Area. This is actually on the kind of in the South Bay in Burlingame, and went out and we did some scanning there. And uh, the guys went out and tied out all our scan control with uh, some static GPS. Uh, static GPS, just using some uh, Trimble equipment. And so what I want to do now is process that control, so I can make sure that we're on a our scan controls on a good datum. So they went ahead and they did some static work and then they leveled through that control. So to start here, the very first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go grab my template. So I have a, a, a project folder structure that I use for, uh, for Trimble Business Center. So I'm going to go grab that if I can remember where I put it here. So I'm actually going to grab both of these. I'm going to grab the TBC file and the folder. I'll just copy those. And then I'm going to drop these in the job. So this is my job folder. If you go into the survey folder, this is just how my company structures their projects. So your, your setup will, will, will most certainly be different. But to come into survey, we have a folder for TBC. You can see I have a working folder there. I'm gonna just go ahead and drop in the uh, drop in the template here. So I typically, if if you've listened to my videos before, you know I like to have a network TBC project. That's where I keep all my static data and do all my primary control work. And then when I'm done with that, I have a working project. That's where I tech, check in what we call the daily jobs or the daily data collector files. And I don't like to mix those because I don't, I don't want to corrupt the network project. So we're actually working on the network project today. I've, d I've done some other videos on the uh, the working project. And then the way we name these is we do our job number. And we call this network. Okay. Then I'm going to just move this VCE file. That's the native project file format for TBC. I'm going to go ahead and move that into this subfolder. Okay, and so let me just run through this folder structure real quick. This is where I put the data sheets if I have them. All my exports go in here, all my imports go in here, the reports go in here, and then I put the VC file in here. I'm not sure what this history log folder is. That might be a, just kind of an artifact. And this is our feature code library, which we won't need today. That's something I use in my working projects, not in my network, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All right, so first thing we want to do is uh, go ahead and open this up. Open up this uh, VCE file. Now, this is a template I've made, so I have a lot of the settings configured the way I want for static work. And um, you'll see, I'll, I'll show you some of those settings as we work through the project. Just be aware that if, if you're starting from scratch in TBC, you probably will have some settings that you need to tweak. And I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, but I will mention those settings as we work through the processing. All right, so this is going to take a minute to open up. So I'm going to pause the video here while it opens. All right, so I'm not sure why TBC crashed there. I had to restart it, but it, I've got the project open now. So you can see we just got a, a blank project. There's nothing in here yet. Um, it does have the feature code library in there. I can just delete that. We don't need it. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and import our data. So uh, let me show you where I have it. So if you come back up here to the job folder under field incoming, uh, this is the scan data. 
and then this is the control data. And what I like to do is I, I, I didn't really separate that by data collector instrument. So I've just got data collector one and two here. And you can see when we open these up, um, we have some some files here. And actually, when you're working with static data, you don't really need these job job files. What you need are these uh, these .to ones. Okay. So I've got one here. And then if we come up here in data collector two, you can see I've got one there. Uh, so it looks like I just have two files, and there'll be multiple points in those. Now, there's an extra step for me because I'm using some uh, older data collectors. Um, so you can see this file right here has a date of 1998 on it, and uh, that's not correct. <laughs> so there's a bug in the firmware of the data collector. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder in here, and I'm going to call it... Uh, all static files because we need to convert these to Rhinex and then do some hand editing. So this is kind of an extra step that you won't have to go through if you're not using out of date gear. Uh, so let me go grab that other TL1. All right. So I'm going to paste these in here and these are proprietary Trimble files which don't do you much good if you need to do any kind of editing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this little utility now. It's called Convert to Rhinex. <clears throat> and I'm going to go find those. T this is a free utility from Trimble, so which is actually kind of nice. So they're not completely locking us in here to their to their file format. They, they do provide a converter. So I'm going to go find those files, those T01 files, and I'm going to open each one. And then I'm going to say file convert. It's just going to convert these to Rhinex, which is a standard file format. It's an open file format, text format. And depending on how much data you have, that might take a little while. All right, I'm going to pause the, the video while these convert because it's going to take a couple minutes. All right, so the conversion is done. You can see down here it tells you it was successful. So we can just close that utility now. And then you can see it just adds the Rhinex files into that same directory. So I'm just going to sort by file type here. Now, what we want to do is we want to go in and we actually want to edit with a text editor. We want to edit these files. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to open them both. And we want the .o. This 18.0 uh, file is the observation file. The in file is the nav file. So we want to open the .o. Okay, and I use this... Uh, uh, open source text editor called notepad plus plus it's pretty nifty so you can download that for free and you can see right here that this file is actually um the, the, it's got the correct dates so it's the 2018 okay so this other file then is going to be the one that needs to be edited so when we open that one you can see it's got this date of 1998 so what i want to do there's a couple spots we got to change that so I'm going to copy this first in this header section. We're just going to copy that correct date there and paste it in. And you have to be very careful. If you mess up any of the spaces here, um, your file's not going to work. And then down here, we need to copy. This is the date too in the observations portion. And so we're just going to do an edit replace. And I actually messed that up. Try this again. And again, you want to make sure that you get all the spaces just right in this. And so we'll say replace all. You can see there was 247 individual observations or epics made here in the file. Okay, and then we'll just save that. All right, so that's kind of an extra step you won't have to do if you've got up-to-date equipment. <laughs> All right, so now that we have that done, I just you guys can't see it, but I pulled this folder over to my other screen here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab those um, Rhinex files, and we'll just pull them in, drag them in to the screen here, and it'll automatically import them. Now, this is a really important screen, so we want to look at this for a minute. <clears throat> First of all, I'm not using Trimble's post-processing software so i'm going to uncheck that so what what this tells us here is the the point number that the guys entered in the data collector the name of the file the start time and the end time 
Okay, and sometimes we get these little junk files. Um, if the guys hit the power button and it and they don't do it properly, we'll get these little junk files. So you can see I got one here that's a minute, and I got one here that's a minute and fifteen. We're just gonna uncheck those. They're just junks. Um, the rest of these look look pretty good, right? So this point right here ran for three hours, so this is kind of their base for this for the static work, and then they've got these ties of about fifteen minutes. Uh, to the uh, individual control points. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, and then over here on the antenna screen, you can see it automatically detected that we've got the Trimble 5800, that we're bottom of mount, and the guys are at uh, two meters. Okay. So that all looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and we'll import that data. Okay, so you can see now I've got the control points in here. With the baselines, these are unprocessed baselines. That's they're kind of that light cyan color, and you can pull, you can select the baseline, pull up the properties. You can see the start time, end time, how long the session was, the HI, where the HI was measured to. It's kind of got all the data in here. Same thing with the point. You can pull that up. It'll tell you the point number. It gives you kind of the autonomous lat long here. Okay. All right. So that's good. Now. <clears throat> The other thing I like to do is, you notice I don't have closed loops here, so I'm going to download and import some data from either a CORS or PBO uh, to, we're going to add to the project and that'll give us some closed loops. So let me show you how I do that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to open my web browser here and we're just going to, if you just Google PBO Rhinex and hit that top link. It'll take you to this page here. Then you grab this link for the FTP server and come in here to the Rhinex folder and the observation folder and go into the year 2018. Okay, and we want to know what day. This is a GPS day of the year here. So we got to figure out what that is. So this data was collected on Monday here, which was the 21st, and today is Wednesday. Okay, and this is always 24 hours behind. So this is. This is Tuesday. The last file here is Tuesday. Okay, so Monday the 21st is one is this day 141. You can also use a GPS date uh, GPS date converter if you need to. Now I need to know what my my closest stations are, so I'm gonna uh, just Google PBO station map, and we'll find out what our closest PBO stations are. This takes a minute to load up. All right, so here's our map. So we'll zoom in to my part of California. And we'll go see what our two or three closest stations are. So this job is actually in Santa Clara, which is down in here. Okay, so I can see I've got P226, P221, and let's grab... P222, so 221, 222, and 226. So this list here in the FTP server is just sorted by station name. So we'll come down to the P's, and we're going to get the .z, the D.Z and the O.Z files for each station. So here's 221. We'll download that. Okay, now where I put these, I've got a specific spot I put these. So if we go into the job folder... And we go to survey, TBC, network, import. And then I like to create a folder in here called GNSS. And I like to create another folder called PBO. And then if I have core stations in here, I'll create a folder called cores. So we're just going to drop these files in there. Okay, so let's see. I got these out of order a little bit because the stations are right next to each other. All right, we got the, uh, let's see, we got 221, the D, 222, the O, 221, the O, so we need 222, the D file. Okay, and then we need both of those files for 226. All right. And one more. And those download pretty quick if you're on a decent internet connection. 
All right, now I, I usually leave this open because we, we may find that we need to come back and get a different station. We want to try and surround our project. So now that I have those open, I'm going to just navigate to that folder. You guys can't see me. I'm on my other monitor here. But I'm going to go find that folder, and we'll just drag those files in. And after it decompresses and imports these, we're going to get that same dialog again. We'll, we'll take a look at that. All right, so I'm going to uncheck these again. And you can see the three stations here. We've got 24 hours worth of data. You can accept the defaults on these antenna heights and receivers because these are continuously operating stations. And we're going to say OK. And we'll give that a minute to add that data. It should add the, the new stations, add the baselines, and then zoom extents for us. All right, so you can see it zoom extents. Uh, it zoomed to the extents of the project. Now we have these other bases. You can see it got closed loops now. And uh, so we have one more step before we process the baselines. And, and there's a reason I do it in this particular order. So the next thing we want to do is we want to import um, some ephemeris data. So if you come to the survey tab in TBC and open up the internet download. Now I like to get, we should be able to get the rapid, ultra rapid orbits from IGS, but I've noticed this server has been down. Um, actually the last few months it's been hit and miss, but we're going to try it. So we we'll just double click on that. And the reason I add my data before I import the ephemeris is, is it'll automatically detect your project time span, which is cool. So we're just going to say, okay, and uh, we're going to see if we if if we're able to hit that server or not. All right, so you can see this this aired out. The server's not not running, uh, which is unfortunate. So what we're going to do then is we're just going to come get the broadcast ephemeris from Trimble. So we'll double click that, and it'll find it. You usually will find those. Okay, so it found the ephemeris file. We'll go ahead and import that. And close this, and then we're just going to come over to the Survey tab and process our baselines. Okay, so we've got our baseline processing results here. What I normally like to do is I just sort this by horizontal precision. I come down and look at my highest values here. Um, those are well within reasonable range. We'll do the same thing for the vertical. So I'm, I'm happy. I, I don't think I need to kick out any baselines here. Now, sometimes when you do this, if if you get these PBO stations too far away and you don't have enough time on your individual sessions, you'll have to kick out some baselines and delete them. That's okay, but it doesn't look like we need to do that this time. So we'll just save those results. Okay, now the very next thing we do after we process this, we're just going to come over and run our loop closures, get an idea how our data is fitting together. So right here on the survey tab, we'll, we'll just hit the loop closure button and I'll pull over this report. So this tells me I've got uh, 28 three legs loop, three leg loops. They all pass based on my criteria. And what I like to look at here is what's my average loop. So my average loop is 800s 3D misclosure, 400s horizontal, 600s vertical, and then here's my worst loop. So this is good looking data. I'm gonna go ahead and print this report. And we're going to save that in the job folder in the reports subfolder. So we'll come into the job, go into survey, TBC, uh, network, and in the report folder. And we call this the GNSS uh, loop closure report. Okay, so what this is telling me is I got good data. I don't have any blunders. My loops are all closing, so that's good. So we can get rid of that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is a network adjustment. <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to hold one point in my network adjustment, and that is typically one of my PBO stations because I've got state plane coordinates on those per NGS cores. So we need to grab that coordinate value to add here. 
So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to end this video. I'm at 20 minutes. It's about double what I like to do. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and find that coordinate, control coordinate. We'll add it. We'll run our minimum, minimally constrained least squares adjustment. We'll look at those results. And then if we got good results, we'll, we'll export our, we'll add our leveled elevations and export our control. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.